Yo, 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 what is going on, folks? It is your host, DJ Wack T Vision, and man, do we have a spicy afternoon for you guys. We have a lot to go over, but first, let's kick up our feet, get comfortable to those listening around the globe, and let's listen to some tunes. We're Activision. We suck at making decisions. We're Activision. You've probably seen us on your television. Ruining in your favorite game, never taking the blame. It's always the same, because we're trying to get paid. Salutations, everybody. It is Matt here today, and Activision is up to some shenanigans, let me tell you what. I used to do a lot of Activision raids. Then they did something really dumb on a weekly basis. I got tired of it, but I have revitalized, and let me tell you what, we gotta talk about what they're doing today. You may have heard of a little game called Spyro Reignited Trilogy. A lot of people are stoked for it, as this is a beloved franchise, and it's coming out this coming September. This information is from the official Spyro website, where fans had discovered, when you look at the game, that if you were to pick it up physically, game one is available on disc. However, to play games two and three, you would need to download them. Now, I know the title is developed by Toys for Bob, not Activision. However, Activision has a history of being awful with file compression. Look at the Call of Duty games as an example. They are always over 100 gigabytes. It's just ludicrous. And I know file size is not indicative of what content is in the game, but these aren't relatively large games whatsoever. It's just they don't compress their files. They eat up your hard drives for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So there are easily one of two reasons why Activision is doing this. And they pretty much overlap, actually. Number one, these games are likely going to be big downloads if they're not putting them on discs. If there's one thing I had learned through the Fallout 76 coverage on my channel, it's that a lot of people don't have access to great internet. So the idea of going to play some of their favorite classics and having to download two full games to do so probably will drive away a lot of consumers. I understand both sides of the fence, whether you're a collector, you're looking for convenience. I lean more towards the physical side personally, which is why this particular issue kind of ticks me off. Because really, 66% of this game is digital. It's really a digital game. I got 10 trading cards here, all right? Imagine if Activision went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dish these out, here's three cards, you buy a pack of cards, you get these three, and then you get a little code on the inside, and they say, hey, you want these seven cards? Guess what you gotta do? Download them online. It sounds fucking weird, right? Cause it is. Which leads to the overlapping issue of they're likely too cheap to print the extra discs this game would require. Which is actually very sad considering recently another collection had just dropped which was the Mega Man X Legacy collection which I've been playing quite a bit and enjoying thoroughly. Now while one's in my PS4, bear with me here as you can see, two discs. God forbid Activision went game one, game two, and maybe a third overlap for game three. However, that was a $40 bundle for both games. You can also buy Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 separately for $20 or the X Legacy Collection 2 for another $20. So if you were only interested in X5 through 8, you could just pick those up for at a cheaper price. Which brings me to my next point. That's probably what Activision is doing. Considering the company paywalled COD 4 remastered behind Infinite Warfare to drive sales until there was a point where there was no reason to have it hidden behind Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare had likely peaked on its sales and was now hitting a dip. Activision had finally made COD 4 Remaster available to all fans to purchase separately. Now I wouldn't be surprised down the line if Spyro 1, 2, and 3 were separately released in the digital sphere for people to pick at their convenience, which isn't the worst thing in the world personally, because I am a fan of X 5 through 8, considering that's really what I grew up with. I love the original Mega Man X, but I wanted to play the whole collection. If I'm someone who's just going for what I'm really looking to, the net convenience factor of picking one game out of a whole collection isn't the worst thing in the world for Activision or any company to really do, just giving the consumer more choices. However, it's the sizable download. It's the fact that these games need to be compressed, but clearly aren't. And the decision to neglect an option of just printing multiple discs for a game that will obviously sell well. I mean, let's look at Crash Insane Trilogy. This game, for the type of title it is, sold a disgusting amount of copy. And I know some people want to look at Crash versus Spyro, but I think Spyro games are much bigger compared to a Crash Bandicoot title. But when you look at the company who just remastered a trilogy of games last year and they do something differently with this set of titles, you have to wonder what's up. Another idea I could suggest is that maybe the games aren't ready yet and they still have yet to go gold, so they're going to release the final two 
digitally so that they can continue to work on them in studio, release it digitally with the day one patch that fixes whatever's wrong with the title. I personally have decent internet because this is my career line, but with that in mind, even I want to opt out of Spyro Reignited Trilogy because it just sounds cumbersome to be a part of, to buy one disc and have to download two full games that you already know are going to be huge download files. It just highlights why gaming can be so weird. Like I said, we have a trilogy last year, which is just fine on the disc. There it all is. And then this year we got this one game, two parts online. It feels like every company has their own unique approach and way of doing things and that nothing's ever just consistent, the straight and narrow with gaming. There's always something being twisted or turned and it's by the companies you despise most. It just blows my mind, man. I mean, this is a company that's tied in with Overwatch, a cash cow, Call of Duty, another cash cow. And especially this year, I think Black Ops 4 with its battle royale mode is going to do insanely well. You got money to spend, help out a company who's doing something for the fans and publish some fucking discs for people to play it physically. It wouldn't be the hardest thing in the world. But instead, we get a PR loaded statement from Activision on how it's very common for day one patches to be a thing. Yeah, let's normalize that shit. Fuck it, it's convenient for us. Just self-centered, that's the thing, man. It's just very self-centered thinking for a company. And they don't care because they are a company. They think with the dollar signs, they see the money that would be saved by not using discs and just throwing two games online. They'll say anyone who wants to play the game will still buy. It. Oh. So anyway, that's my Activision rant. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think about this debacle in the comments down below. I love that word. Other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content we create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.